Good morning and night, guys. My name is Miss Sunshine. Welcome back to more of the Walsingham Files. Okay, so the last time that we left off, uh, we got a chance to meet um, Detective DeVries. DeVries, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but we're here in somewhere. We, we met up with Detective Langley. We're heading into the forest to meet up with another, with another guy, another detective. So, here we go. I don't know why I need to stay on the path. I just do. Okay. Detective Sarah Fitzgerald, Gloucester Police Department. You're the park ranger here, right? Finally. Don't, sir. Okay. Don't. We traveled from all the way where we were to meet you. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I called the police three hours ago. What took y'all so long? Wait, are we the first police officers you've seen since you called? No, a state trooper came by on his bike about an hour or so after I reported the incident. He said that he'd organized a police line surrounding the nature reserve and that backup was on its way. Until then, orders were to secure all the entrances to the park and to make sure no one entered or left. Oh, so you're not alone? No, we have three rangers in charge of this park and two exits. By the way, sorry if my voice is a little uh, I literally just woke up, but I wanted to play this game, so we're just going to go with it. It's going to be fine. Since I'm the most experienced with firearms, I chose to guard this gate alone, letting the other two stay together. I see that you're packing serious heat. Are the rest of the rangers also armed? We park rangers are armed better than you regular cops. We don't just have to worry about criminals, but also have to deal with wolves, bears, and smugglers. Let's see. As you can see, I have a Remington pump action shotgun. I'm basically better than you. A hunting rifle and a Beretta. Dang, sir. Like, really? Okay, you go, sir. Darn. Looks like you're going to war. Can't play it too safe with the murderer on the loose and all. Murder? What the hell happened here? What? Haven't they told you anything? Not a darn thing. Nope. No one's told me anything. Don't forget how awful interpret sorry, interdepartmental communication can be. Yeah. Please just tell me everything like you're reporting it for the first time. Okay. So basically here's what happened, okay? So last night at about eight forty nine PM, I got a mysterious call at the range station. It sounded like a deep and gruff man and he said tonight they will all die there's nothing you can do to stop me Ooh, okay my mind is still kind of cloudy from silver creek falls uh so i can't remember everything but maybe because i if i'm not mistaken i believe silver creek falls had to deal with like aliens or, or invisible people or something so no i think it was aliens maybe this will be it i don't know he immediately hung up after, saying his piece, not giving me a chance to respond. Did you report this to the police? No, we get prank calls all the time. There are like three colleges within a 20 mile radius from here. Darn, college kids? Wait, I'm in college. So yeah, assuming it was another prank call, I left it alone and called it at, called it a night at nine, as I had to come in the next morning for my patrol. Did you detect any accent or anything particular about the voice? No particular accent, just normal American, I suppose. His voice was nearly unnaturally deep. Like the voice they use for trailers and stuff. So he was like a movie trailer guy. Nice. Okay, so you said that you called it- oh wait, we have to be detective now. Don't forget. So, have a pen. Let's see. What, where was the paper? Or the page? Gotta be a good detective. Good detective. Okay. So you called it in. So, let's see. He's got a call around. It was 8 49 p.m. You left at 9 p.m. Okay. Okay, so you said that you called it, called it a night at 9, that, that night, because you knew you had to do patrols next morning. Okay, that's right. What time did your new patrol begin? 
7 a.m. in the morning. Okay, then. Okay. New patrol at 7. Gotta write that down. New patrol at 7 in morning. Got it. Alright. Okay, then. I usually start through the south gate as most of the campsites are closer to the north gate, so I arrive at the campsites a little later. Why do you do that? A lot of young couples like to camp here, and well, they like to do what young couples like to do in the morning, if you catch my gift. Yikes, okay. I'm not one to disturb their morning activities. Okay, please cut to the crime already. Sorry. So, I got to the little bridge before crossing the creek, and I see a young woman crying, looking as pale as a ghost. I run to her and check if everything is okay, and she immediately grabs me and screams for help. She won't stop screaming and crying for a good 10 minutes until I can calm her down enough so she can talk. She tells me that on her morning walk, she passed the camp revere and saw big red splotches on the tents and some bodies on the ground. Her instinct kicked in straight away and she bolted away with all her strength looking for help. Thing is, she had just woken up and hadn't stretched so she got a real bad cramp but was also frozen in fear from what she saw. Fortunately, I had appeared within a few minutes of her cramp. Where is the woman now? I left her with my two colleagues. I figured she'd feel safer in, sorry, safer in a big group. They're by at the ranger station, facing the north gate. Why the hell haven't the paramedics been scrambled here to look over this poor woman? You tell me, detective. It seems my, mighty strange to me that me and my ranger have been left alone here to handle this for so long. There's something weird going on, that's for sure. So... What did you do after you encountered this woman? I radioed in backup from nearby excess police and called in the rest of my team. When they arrived, I left the woman with them while I ran to my ranger station by the south gate. Then, on my way there, I was stopped by a trooper. He immediately countermanded my orders and insisted that my rangers and I guard the entrances until more police came, which he insisted would be soon enough. This is so weird and so against protocol on so many levels. How many times can you say so? Huh. Who the hell is running this show? Initially, I thought it would be the state troopers, but now that you're here, I guess it's the excess police running the show? IDK, maybe? No, didn't you hear me earlier? We're with the PD. The excess boys are handling the perimeter. What the hell is going on here? Right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. Just calm down, guy. What's your name? Oscar. We're gonna get your name, sir. Oscar said all this stuff. Oscar. Okay. Got you, sir. Got you on my radar. Being a good detective, man. As I said earlier, I'm Detective Sarah Fitzgerald. This is Officer DeVries. Just gonna go with that. Officer Imone DeVries. Good to meet you, Oscar. As I said earlier, I'm sh I sure am glad to finally have someone else here. Okay, Oscar, have you been to the campsite yet? Yeah, I took a quick look after my colleague arrived. It ain't pretty. Okay, can you take us there? It's just behind me. Come, follow me. Oscar's on our team. Oscar's on our team. We're gonna save real quick. Here. Items. Just got a letter. All right. Or maybe he's not on our team. So this is the creek where you found the woman crying? That's right. The crime scene is just the head. Got it. Let's do this, fellas. Oh! Is everyone okay? Yeah, that was close. They really should have done something about this bridge before something like this could happen. Oh, wow, we almost fell. We almost fell through, guys. That, hmm, okay. I'll be sure to report and follow up getting this bridge completely checked. Yeah, let's tread lightly and walk on a more stable part of the bridge. Fine, whatever. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. That's not cool. That's not cool, man. What the hell happened here? That's what we're hoping you two can figure out. Oscar, calm down. We got this, okay? Ranger, 
You can stand aside if you like. We can take it from here. I've seen my fair share of bear mauling, so I'm used to a bit of gore. I believe I'd be of most use by your side. In case y'all have any questions. Suit yourself. Alright. Objective. Investigate the crime scene. Oh, we're so gonna investigate. First things first. That's weird. What is? There's all this blood splatter on the side, but the corpse of the two victims are on the other side of the tent. Right. Let's go ahead and assume that the blood belongs to the male victim. After all, he had his throat cut and that would cause a big splash like this. If he was attacked on this side, then why would his body be on the other side? Maybe he tried to crawl away as he was bleeding out and made it to the other side of the tent. Don't think so. We'd see a blood trail and some marks on the ground from where he moved himself, if that was the case. Maybe the killer moved him there. It's possible, but why go through the bother of moving the body but not disposing of it properly? Exactly. There you go, Sarah. There you go. Hiding the body sorry, hiding the bodies would delay the investigation for a few days. Give the killer time to get further away. Maybe the killer wanted to enough to ride enough. Maybe the killer wanted to display the body, you know, show off their handiwork. That's a dark thought, but you may be onto something. You might be dealing with a serial killer here. Anything inside? Completely empty. That is very odd indeed. Let's check the bodies. Horizontal slice of the throat. I think we can be sure that's the cause of death. Hold on. Alright. Make sure I'm on time. Sorry, I had to check. And there's a clock. It's whatever. I can't see any other laceration, cuts, or bruises on his body. You have your surgical gloves on you, right? Yes, ma'am. Can you carefully reach into his jacket and trouser pocket to see if he has a wallet or a phone on him? See if we can somehow ID this guy? Nah, nothing on him. Not even keys or anything that a thief would want to steal. Well, looks like we have our work cut out for us. That's a hell of a cut on his throat. Makes you wonder how the murderer managed to do that without having to do anything else to the guy. Good observation. His hands don't have any cuts or bruises on them either. Like he didn't even try to defend himself. Maybe he knew the person that did it. That could be true. Or they snuck up on him from behind. It's a thick wood and in the cover of night, it wouldn't be hard to sneak up on someone at all. Ugh, sorry. Let's check out the fire, can we? Can I check out the fire? Can't check that out. Anybody in the sleeping bag? That's the negative, ma'am. Well, it's pretty obvious that the killer, vi that the victims aren't killed in their sleep. It's a bit weird that the sleeping bag is outside the tent, isn't it? Maybe they were airing it. Also, it's been a pretty warm October, so I wouldn't be surprised if they chose to sleep outside instead. I wouldn't know. I'm not into camping much. Anything else inside the sleeping bag? A gold necklace with the Star of David pendant attached to it. Guess at least one of our victims was Jewish then. Think this might have any think this might have been any anti Semitic thing. Maybe down in the south, but you don't really see as much of that sort of thing here in Massachusetts. Not to say that there aren't any neo Nazis here. They there certainly are some. I wonder where the other sleeping bag is. Maybe they shared a bag. The two victims looked about the same age and they are camping just the two of them. It's not completely out of this world to assume that they were a couple. Guess we'll find out after searching a bit more. We'll find out soon enough when we get the results from forensics. As our good friend the park ranger said, couples often come out here for a romantic evening. We find any of the male victim semen in the vagina of the female victim will know. Let's check her body then. Multiple stab wounds on the kidney and lung, and some light bruising on the neck. I suspect that the killer came in from behind and grabbed the victim's throat and knew exactly what they were aiming to stab. This poor woman had a much slower and more painful death than her male counterpart. Darn, that means we're dealing with someone who knows what they're doing. I don't think this murder happened in a, rage of, in a fit of rage. I agree, the stab wounds are deep with limited tearing. The killer didn't hack and slash around. They knew how to kill. Check her pockets. Anything like a wallet or phone we can use to ID her? Nothing, ma'am. Darn it! Okay. Killer had time to go through the 
to get their huh killer had time to get their hands on those think this could have been a mugging that went badly no I don't think that at all whoever killed the, these people came here to do just that how about sexual assault sexual assault victims normally have a lot more bruises and usually have torn clothing if the assault didn't happen at the rapist's chosen location. Aside from her neck, there is no visible bruising on the female victim's body and her hands and arms have no scratches or scars. That makes sense, so probably no rape involved in this murder? I mean, we'll, tr we'll truly find out when we have the forensic forensics analysis results, but I don't think there was a sexual assault element to this murder. Let's check this. Check out these bloodstains, ma'am. They're all over the table. Given that the female victim is near, we can assume that the, that that's her blood. But let's not rule anything out until we get results from forensics. There's a lot more blood on the side than the other. I expect that she may have been sitting and preparing to eat when she was attacked. She probably slid off the bench when she was using the last of her strength to escape. The food looks like it was just open, but they haven't started eating yet. I think the female victim was probably preparing breakfast or something. Hmm. Oh. After investigating the two bodies, I am quite sure that the axe is not a murder weapon. So maybe the guy just threw the blood on there to make it look like it to throw them off. You could not do what the killer did to the victims using such an unwieldy weapon. So you think this was just for show? Uh, yeah. I'm certain of it. The killer either put it out there as a challenge or as a poor form of misdirection. The blood on the axe and the tree stub? I suspect he carefully poured it on after killing the two victims. Heck, it might not even be their blood. Ooh, now what is this? It's, what is that? See anything of interest, ma'am? The bin is overflowing with cans of beer and Bacardi breezers. I don't know what that is. There's a lot of alcohol. Oh, for just two people. Clearly, you've never hung out in South Boston. Range Peterson, how often are the bins cleared out here? We have it done every morning. Wait a minute. Did he ever tell us his last name? I don't think we ever got his last name, so how did she know? He only told us his name was Oscar. That was it. Unless if I missed it in the last one. Okay. So this would represent one day of garbage. Not normally. Even if there is a party, most of the time the people do clean up before they leave. Typically, the type of person that likes to go camping also has respect for nature and the great outdoors. True, it will be interesting to find out how much alcohol the two victims have in their system after we get the results from forensics. I get that. Okay? I get it. Also, before I check in that tip, check this out. Anything interesting on the canteen? No blood or anything on it. It's empty too. It says Warrenville High, class of 09. Well, that tells us where at least one of the two victims went to high school. Do you know where Warrenville is, Mel? Uh, yeah, you're not from around here, are you? No, I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale. Right on. Oh, I heard the weather is wicked nice down there. Why'd you move here? I actually don't like the heat and humidity down in Florida, so I requested a transfer on after my first year on the course. Also, I'm big into sports, so I wanted to be close to all of those great Boston teams. Good. Good choice. Oh, good choice. I like you more already for it. So, where's Warrensville? It's about 25 miles north of here, right by the border of New Hampshire. Looks like there might that might be our next pit stop after we finish here. And let's check this tent. Two tents? Maybe the two victims aren't a couple and are just friends. Oscar, everyone here is supposed to bring their own tents, right? That's right. Do people need to register to use the campgrounds? No, we don't do that. Do you have cameras at the gates or around the park? Only at the ranger stations. It's a lot of work maintaining park cameras that aren't connected to the mains. You have to change the batteries and the tapes at all the, all the time. Most parks don't have those. I see. Officer DeVries, find anything interesting inside? It's completely empty and clean, like it was set up but never used. Empty, just like the other tent. There is something funny going on around here. Alright, can I check this one more time? I already checked that. Already checked that. What's up beyond this path? 
The path leads to Camp Prescott. After that, the northern trail that leads to the north gate. Were there campers in Prescott too? Yeah, I believe there were a couple. I had my colleagues ev sorry, evacuate them to the northern ranger station. Oh my gosh, once again, just woke up. Bear with me. I instructed them to keep all the campers there in case the detective in charge wanted to ask any questions. Nice. I'm glad at least someone decided to follow protocol. Heck yeah. I can take you up there after y'all are done investigating here. Oh, so we're not done? We, we not, we not done? Oh wait, what is that? Unless you fancy eating some bloody potato chips, I recommend keep moving. Well, I tried to look at the fire and you wouldn't let me. Wouldn't let me look at the fire. Okay, we looked at the body, looked at the sleeping bag. At the rock? Let's look at the rock. Can't look at the rock. Can we look at the rock? Can't look at the rock. Okay, let's look at the sign, okay? Let's look at this sign. Look at the sign. No. Can we check her again? I don't think there's anything else to see here. Let's move along. We're done here. Let's go to the north. Okay. Let's just go. Alright. Actually, hold up. I am running out of time. So I'm going to save it there. And I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Because, oh my gosh, so much is going on and it's only part two. It's only the second part. Man, I am so ready for this. You don't understand how ready I am. I'm excited. And this is only chapter one, so I wonder if it's going to be a thing where this one's going to do what Silver Creek Falls did and it's going to be kind of like a trilogy thing, or if this is just it. Well, no, it just says chapter one, so I'm guessing there has to be more than one chapter. Anyway, it's great, and I love it. I love it so far. It's amazing. So, thank you guys so much for joining me for this, and until next time we meet, stay sunny side up, guys. Bye!